So, Ryan Reynolds. This guy's pretty much a household name at this point, right? I mean, whether you know him as Deadpool or the dude from Van Wilder, he's kind of everywhere these days. But let's not forget, it wasn't always like this. Ryan had a bit of a journey before he became the king of sarcasm and Twitter roasts. First off, let's talk about his Canadian roots. Yep, Ryan's from Vancouver, Canada. Maybe that's where he gets his nice guy vibe, you know? He's got that classic Canadian politeness, even when he's cracking jokes or trolling people online. It's like he can't help but be charming, even when he's being a bit of a smartass. And honestly, that's why people love him. Now, Ryan didn't just wake up one day as Deadpool. He had to put in his work. Starting way back in the early 90s, his first major role was on a show called 15 on Nickelodeon. It was this teen drama, super cheesy, with all this angst you'd expect from a show aimed at preteens. Ryan played this character named Billy, and let's just say it was an interesting start. But hey, everyone's got to start somewhere, right? At 15, Ryan bounced around a lot, picking up small roles here and there. But things really started to change when he landed a role on Two Guys, A Girl, and a Pizza Place in 1998. Now, the show wasn't exactly groundbreaking, but it was a solid sitcom that gave Ryan a chance to show off his comedic chops. He played Berg, or Michael Bergen, one of the titular guys, and you could already see that quick wit and charm starting to shine through. The show ran for four seasons while it wasn't a massive hit, it definitely helped put Ryan on the map. But Ryan wasn't content on just being a sitcom star, he wanted more, and that's where Van Wilder comes in. Released in 2002, Van Wilder was this raunchy comedy where Ryan played this perpetual college student who was more interested in, say, throwing parties than he was graduating. This movie wasn't a huge box office success, but it quickly became a cult classic, especially among college students. And let's be real, this role was what really solidified Ryan as the funny, charming guy we all know today. Now, you might think after Van Wilder, Ryan would just stick to comedy, but he actually chose to branch out to more serious roles. In 2005, he started in the Animal Horror remake with playing George Lutz, the guy who slowly loses his mind in a haunted house. The movie itself was, well, it wasn't exactly a masterpiece, but it showed that Ryan could do more than just crack jokes. He had some serious acting chops, even if the movie didn't really let him showcase them. Then came Green Lantern in 2011. Ah, Green Lantern. That movie that's pretty much a punchline at this point. Ryan played the titular superhero, Hal Jordan, but the movie was a total mess. The CGI was rough, the story didn't make sense, and it just didn't click with the audiences. Ryan's even joked about how bad it was multiple times, especially after he finally got the chance to play Deadpool the way it was meant to be played. Speaking of Deadpool, that's really where Ryan's career took off. But before we get to that, let's talk about X-Men's origins, Wolverine. Now, this was supposed to be Ryan's big break into the superhero world, he played Wade Wilson, a.k.a. Deadpool. But the version of Deadpool they gave us in that movie, total disaster. They literally showed his mouth shut. The guy known as Merc the Mouth couldn't even speak. Fans weren't happy, and neither was Ryan. But Ryan didn't give up. He knew Deadpool had potential, so he fought like crazy to get a standalone movie made. And after some test footage, quote-unquote accidentally, leaked online... Yeah, we're all pretty sure Ryan had something to do with that. The fans went nuts, and the studio finally greenlit the project. Deadpool hit theaters in 2016, and it was a game changer. It was an R-rated superhero movie that didn't hold back, full of violence, crude humor, and a whole lot of heart. And Ryan, he was perfect in the role. It was like he was born to play Deadpool. The movie smashed box office records, and suddenly, Ryan was back on top. And what's cool about Ryan is he just didn't stick to playing Deadpool after that. Sure, there was the sequel, Deadpool 2 in 2018, which was just as hilarious and action-packed as the first, and the new movie out, Deadpool and Wolverine. But Ryan's also done a bunch of other stuff. For example, The Voices. This dark comedy where he plays this guy who talks to his pets and they talk back and they're kind of evil. It's weird, it's creepy, it's totally different from anything else he's done, but that's Ryan for you. He's not afraid to take risks and try something new. And it's not just acting. Ryan's got really into producing as well. He was super involved in getting Deadpool made, and since then, he's been producing more and more of his own projects. He's got a real knack for it, too. Plus, he's a savvy businessman. You've heard of Aviation Gin? Yeah, that's Ryan's company. He bought a stake in it a few years ago and turned it into this huge brand, mostly by being hilarious in the ads. 
Like, there's one where he talks about how smooth the gin is while just being his usual charming sarcastic self, and it worked. The brand took off, and Ryan eventually sold it for a ton of money. But let's not forget about his personal life. Ryan's married to Blake Lively, and if you follow them on social media, you know they're basically a couple goals. They troll each other in the best of ways, like the time Blake posted a photo of Ryan on Instagram, but cropped him out so it was just a picture of Ryan Gosling. Or when Ryan posted a photo of the two for them on her birthday, but cut out her face. It was all good fun, and you can tell they're super close. They got three kids now, and you just know Ryan's going to be the dad who embarrasses them in the most hilarious ways as they grow up. Ryan's also into charity work. He and Blake donate tons of money to various causes, and he's always using his platform to raise awareness for things like mental health, children's hospital, and more. It's not just about writing checks for them. They're actually involved, showing up and making a difference. And of course, you can't forget about his social media game. Ryan's Twitter is legendary. Whether he's trolling Hugh Jackman in their ongoing fake feud, or just making random jokes about being a dad, he's always keeping things light and funny. It's part of why people love him. He's relatable, even though he's a huge movie star. He doesn't take himself too seriously, and that's refreshing. But let's talk about one of the more unexpected moves Ryan's made. Buying a Welsh football club, Wrexham AFC, with Rob McAheeney from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Yep, a Hollywood star and a comedian bought a soccer team. And they didn't do it just for laughs. They actually wanted to help the club and its community. They even made a documentary series about it called Welcome to Wrexham, where you get to see the whole journey from buying the team to trying to turn it around. It's got sports, it's got comedy, it's got a heart, just like everything Ryan does. So, what's next for Ryan Reynolds? Honestly, who knows? The guy's always surprising us. He's got several movies lined up, of course, and, and who knows what other crazy business ventures he'll get into. But whatever he does, you can bet it'll be entertaining. Ryan's not just a funny guy or a successful actor. He's a reminder that you can fail spectacularly, <clears throat> Green Lantern, and still come back stronger. He's proof that being kind, being real, and not taking yourself too seriously can go a long way. And that's why he's adored. Because in a world that can be pretty cynical, Ryan Reynolds is out there making us laugh, giving back, and just having a blast with it all. Thank you for watching this video on Ryan Reynolds. If you liked it, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell for further updates. See you next time.